So yeah, if you've been to the sessions on Rapid or Daylight earlier in this session, uh, this will kind of build on that story a little bit and hopefully connect a few dots for you about the work that Esri has been doing. So uh, as the title implies, we are building an open data pipeline into OpenStreetMap, and we have been here for the past few years partnering with a few organizations. So I thought I'd start off with kind of a conceptual diagram of how that works. Hopefully it'll kind of connect the dots for you. So our users, uh, our user community of GIS users are using a product called ArcGIS, and they're typically using that to build geographic information as GIS professionals. So you can think of cities or counties or national mapping agencies who are leveraging this GIS technology to create data. And many of them are willing and able to share that as open data. So that open data that they're making available is now being prepared and shared for use within OpenStreetMap. Uh, so what that means is we're converting the data from its native data model and whatever schema the contributor has created it in and transforming it into an OSM friendly format, converting uh, fields and values into keys and values in OSM speak. And then publishing that as feature services in ArcGIS Online. And then those ArcGIS data sets published as feature services can be consumed. So the developers of Rapid and Jossum have integrated ArcGIS services into those OSM editors. So in Rapid, for example, you can launch the managed data sets and find a set of these data sets, which you'll see here in a minute, bring those into Rapid. Same thing with Jossum through the Maps with AI plugin. And then in those editors, you can edit bringing in those features from uh, ArcGIS and pushing them into OpenStreetMap. So as those features are edited in Rapid or Jossum, they then flow immediately into OSM. And then a couple things happen. Uh, on the Esri side, we're publishing those, uh, those edits as ArcGIS feature layers in ArcGIS Online. So you can consume OSM as hosted feature layers or feature services in ArcGIS Online. And then of course, they're also being added to the OSM tiles hosted by OpenStreetMap.org. And then kind of later than that, uh, the partners at Meta and Microsoft and Esri are creating this OSM daylight distribution, an alternate distribution of OSM, where periodically we take OSM, run it through some quality checks, and output the OSM daylight distribution. Uh, that also is being fed by some of these ArcGIS data sets to enrich it with additional features. And then lastly, Esri's producing a vector tile base map from that. And then the back again part comes in where these feature layers are being published back into ArcGIS applications, including our desktop applications, our web applications, our mobile applications, uh, as well as the feature, the vector tiles going back into that. And then if you have your own application, maybe you're building something with open source software like OpenLayers or Leaflet or Mapbox GLJS, you can also bring in those uh, services as vector tiles and feature layers. So that's how all the pieces kind of fit together. What I'm going to do next is uh, just highlight very quickly these three areas in yellow, and then Steve's going to do a demo of those. So ArcGIS data sets in OSM. So our goal here really is to take a lot of uh, useful, authoritative data from GIS professionals and make it easily accessible to the OSM mapping community if they would like to use that to pull into OpenStreetMap. We're not doing bulk imports. We're just converting it into an OSM-friendly format, exposing it through OSM editors, and then OSM mappers can go to an area of interest and they can bring those layers in and then they can, can use it during their editing. Uh, most of our user community uh, is interested in sharing their data in various ways, and Esri is also promoting this to our user community. And we're helping to facilitate the data sharing of this. So what's Esri's role in this? Uh, primarily, it's one, validating that the, the data is useful in OSM, validating that the license is compatible for use within OSM, encouraging users to share their data in open licenses that are compatible, and then in many cases, we are doing that data prep that I showed on the previous slide, doing the transformation into the OSM-friendly format. But we're also working with other organizations like CART. They volunteered to help do some of this data prep with us. And it's not necessary that Esri does it or CART does it. Anybody could do it uh, just following some basic steps. Uh, the feature layers that I mentioned. So uh, this is kind of interesting because a lot of our user community is very interested in OSM, but they want to use it within their software that they're using on a daily basis. 
Uh, so as I implied, we have a live replica of OSM data that we're hosting in the cloud. Um, and we're syncing minutely diffs from OpenStreetMap for that. And what we're doing is providing access to this OSM data as open feature layers in ArcGIS. Uh, features like buildings, highways, amenities are predefined uh, views of the OSM database that we've authored. And then we're sharing this under an open data license. Uh, we're in the process of republishing all of this data set uh, worldwide. We got some feedback from the OSM community and from the Esri community about specific tags they'd like to see. So we're now republishing all of our services for each region, North America, South America, Europe, and so forth. And in the next month or two, we'll be complete with all of that <coughs> republishing. And then lastly, as I mentioned, we have a vector tile base map of OpenStreetMap uh, powered by the OSM daylight distribution. Uh, so this map is designed to be very highly performant and very scalable. So rather than us relying on OpenStreetMap.org and their generosity for tiles and pushing our users their direction, we're hosting our own copy of OSM as vector tiles in ArcGIS Online, uh, powered by the daylight distribution. And what's nice about vector tiles is that you can restyle them in many ways. So we have many off-the-shelf styles that we support, the default OSM cartography, plus other Esri styles that we've applied to that, and we make them available to the ArcGIS community, as well as to others through uh, these open source APIs that I described. So with that, I will hand it over to Steve, and Steve will do a quick demo of some of these capabilities. <clears throat> All right, can you hear me okay? Sounds like it, yeah. Um, yeah, so like Dean said, oops. Uh, I'm just going to walk through kind of some of the things that, that Dean just talked about, hopefully give you a clearer picture of what this actually looks like um, sort of in practice. So we're starting kind of on the far left-hand side of that pipeline in this, in this slide here, this tab. So this is ArcGIS Online, and these are all the customer data sets that have been shared with us as open data, and that the customers have also given us permission to share that data with OpenStreetMap. So, I'm not going to go through really specific ones, but it's you know building footprints and address points from from kind of all over the world. Um, so we've taken the data, we've done some light QA on it, we've translated it into a schema that's compatible with OpenStreetMap or, or really the OpenStreetMap schema, um, published it as as these hosted feature layers in our platform, and then we've grouped them together in this Esri feature layers for OSM group. Um, now jump forward, so now we're kind of like in the middle of that, that pipeline at this point. So this is Rapid, like Dean mentioned, we've been doing some integration work with the Rapid editing team, and I don't know if any of them are here, but Ben and Brian, there they are, thank you. Um, so I've already zoomed in, this is uh, Buckeye, Arizona. We don't have any data for Pima County or Tucson yet, but, so if you click the Rapid button, you get Facebook roads, ML roads, uh, and Microsoft ML buildings, but if you hit Add Manage, oops, Add manage data sets, you get ArcGIS data sets. So Rapid's querying that group that I just showed you in ArcGIS Online, and it's getting all the items that are, that are contained there. So as we put new features, or, or sorry, new items, new layers into that group, they just show up here pretty much on the fly. So I search for Buckeye. I'll add City of Buckeye Buildings. And I'm also going to add, oops, I'm going to search for Address. And if I scroll down, <clears throat> so this is U.S. addresses from the U.S. DOT National Address Database. So let me do that. Okay, so there's a few things now on the map. So the red features are existing OSM polygons. The yellow features are being rendered on the fly for, in the client from our feature layer that we've published from Buckeye's data, the city of Buckeye's data. And actually, if I... Yeah, so the green points are the address points from, from the National Address Database. So if I hover over one of the Buckeye uh, building footprints, I don't have a lot of tags, just building is yes, state is Arizona, and that's really it. But if I hover over this address point, I have a full address, so house number, street name, city, you know, et cetera. So I'm gonna click on the address point, say use this feature, I'm gonna click on the building footprint and say use this feature. And then I'm gonna do a shift, a shift click, so now I've got the building footprint and the address point selected. 
And I don't know if this stands for combine or conflate or condense, but if you hit the C key, <laughs> yeah, you can call it merge. Sure. If you hit the C key, it actually smushes the uh, address tags from the address point onto this, to the building polygon. So we've got a single feature now, just a polygon, but it has, you can see down kind of at the bottom there, it has all the address information from that, that address point. So I'm just going to change this to house because it's definitely a house. Push that up. Okay, so at this point, that, that's like any edit going into OpenStreetMap, um, and, and we're now kind of on the, the far right hand side of that that pipeline. So the edit's gone into OpenStreetMap. It's going to go down that that path. So into the OSM Cardo tiles, the raster base map. It's also going to go into the OSM database, but it's also going to kind of take a, a turn off into to ArcGIS land. So. Um, we, we sort of do two main things right now with the OSM data as far as consuming it. So the first is vector tile base maps like Dean talked about. So I'll just go through these pretty quickly, but this is our first one. It's made to emulate the OSM raster tile cartography. And it's different in some ways, but it's fairly similar. Uh, this is the same more or less cartography, but it's draped over a, a shaded relief. And then these are kind of more of our, our standard Esri base map styles. So streets, our light and dark gray canvas. This one's kind of cool as well. This is a, an, like a hybrid um, mashup of, of a reference layer from OSM daylight data uh, on top of our, our imagery base map. So the other path that we that we take the data down is our live feature layers. So we're publishing feature layers from our customer data as it comes in, uh, but we're also publishing live feature layers that we keep in sync every 60 seconds that Dean mentioned with the main OSM database. So um, we, we have those kind of published as like thematic layers, so leisure areas, buildings, highways. So this is actually an app called uh, ArcGIS Exhibit, the Exhibit app. So it's kind of a slideshow, but it's also an interactive web map. So I can zoom in and <clears throat> I can click on a building and I'm getting tags from the actual OSM feature. So it's not a tile layer that we're looking at. It's on top of a tile layer, but you can, you can query the features and, and get actual, yeah, information. Um, are you in ArcGIS now? Or are you in this is, it's an ArcGIS app, so essentially... So you can. Uh, I don't know about if that app in particular is accessible to for with a public account. A public account is a free ArcGIS Online account that anybody can have. Um, I don't know if that app's included, but yeah, anybody could use this application. It is public, and maybe the bigger point is that anybody could build that application. I built that application without writing a single line of code, just using the ArcGIS account and authoring a map into it. So. <clears throat> This is the neighborhood where we, we just added that, that feature. We don't really have time to wait for it to, to pop through here, but just to kind of you know show you, it's, it's sort of what I already did, but um, you know these are features that I've added in, over the last kind of couple of days as we've been, we've been putting the demo together. So um, you can see, if I click off of that, you can see the address points where, where they're included. It's labeled on the building footprint. And we have a cool little, little hyperlink. You can jump to straight to openstreetmap.org and, and view that feature, so. Um, I'm gonna jump back. So yeah, just kind of you know wrap it up. We sort of went through this whole pipeline. We started with data from City of Buckeye, prepared it, shared it to ArcGIS Online. It's therefore consumable through that group in Rapid. An OSM mapper can go in there, take those features, push them into OpenStreetMap, and then it, like I said, goes down kind of two paths: OpenStreetMap.org, and then back around to to Esri, and then we kind of start over at the beginning again. So. Hopefully that, it's kind of quick and it's a lot, but, but hopefully that, that gives you a good idea. Um, so some metrics too, I just wanted to briefly talk about, uh, I think we've been actually doing the rapid integration for about a year and a half. And in that time we've put over 1 million new features into OpenStreetMap. So and those, are, those are building footprints and address points that have come from those, those feature layers that I just showed, this exact workflow. Um, we also contribute to the Microsoft Building sidecar file that goes with the Daylight uh, PDF, and we have about almost 10 million in there. Um, yeah, and then about 135 total uh, layers. It's growing all the time, and then kind of some, some highlights there as far as the number of features that have been added in those areas. And yeah, 
one more slide, and I think we'll have time for questions. Yeah, so I think uh, I'll just leave this up while we're taking any questions that you have, but this kind of summarizes some of the opportunities to participate either by recommending things that could go into this system, helping to prepare data sets, maybe reviewing data sets that have been prepared, or actually using it to do editing, or using the services that we shared in your own work. So lots of opportunities there if you'd like to participate. So with that, are there any questions we can help you with? Thank you.